Hey, this video will cover dgraphs12 for basic graph, QL plus minus features. You can find this interactive tool at tool.dgraph.io. I'll be using and explaining the same queries that can be found in the tool. Know that you need to have a running instance of dgraph on your local machine, and I've loaded the data that can be found in the introduction tool. So the first query we have here is a pretty typical database query. We're trying to retrieve some values from the database using a given key. So the query you may notice is quite similar to other GraphQL queries, where you specify the fields that we'd like to retrieve. So if you notice, the first field is actually find Michael. This doesn't actually have too much impact on the query. It just tells the database what the response field name should be. We then have our main database query here, which we're testing the equivalence of the name edge on the string Michael. We're then requesting the UID, name, and age of all of the nodes which match our query. So if you can imagine what this query does is it retrieves all the nodes who, which have a ed name edge which matches the string Michael, which is a UID name and age. So we run this, we can see that is what we get. We get one result which has the UID age and name of Michael populated. So the first query wasn't really that interesting. It didn't make use of any of the graph, graph structures. So this query has a brand new field. It's called friend. And what this friend has is a nested name field. If you look at how the data was inserted, friend is an edge which points to another node. And that node also has a name field. So what this query would do is it will resolve the friend and populate the name field. So if we run this query, we can see that is what it does. We can see all of Michael's friend's names. You may also notice that there's an app dot at the end. That is used for localization purposes. Basically, what you need to know for now is that it retrieves the name in the first available language. This will be covered shortly in this tour. Another thing we can try out is seeing Michael's pets. That is on the owns pet edge, which will also point to another node. And we can treat the name for that. So now if we run this query, we can see Michael's pet has been populated with Rami the sheep. So like all other databases, DGraph also has its own data types and schemas. Note that dgraph has no concept of tables, so schemas are actually applied on the whole database. So this query we have here retrieves a schema for the following predicates, or the edges, name, age, friend, and known as pet. We are then going to retrieve the type and index for each of these. So we run this query, we can see that's what we get. We get a list of all the predicates, and also the types, and whether or not they get indexed. We notice that there are two special types at the end, the UIDs. Now, if you may already notice that these predicates, friends and owns pet, point to another node in the database. So type UID predicates point to another node in the database. You can see a list of all the available types in dgraph here in the tool. You can also find it in the GraphQL plus minus documentation. More about schemas, such as how to create them, will be covered in another tool. UTF-8, a localization, is first class in dgraph. That means for every edge, which is a string, you can actually specify the language that string is in. So you can have multiple edges with the same name in different languages, and request for a certain preference of languages within your GraphQL queries. So in this case, we specify a name edge, and then we specify language with the at symbol and then the language code. In this case, we have three languages specified. Bengali, Hindi, and English. These are separated by colons. And what this does is it retrieves the language in preference of left to right. For example, if the Bengali language is available, then it will be used first. However, if it is not available, then it will use the Hindi name. If the Hindi name is not available, it will use English. If none of these languages are available, then the field will not be returned. We can see that some of the things have been done on the name edge for the friends of Amit. We specify we would like to retrieve the names of his friends in Korean or Russian. And if neither available, the name field will be missing. So if we run this query, we can see that Emmett's name has been populated. And we can see he has some friends, three friends. One with a Korean name, one with a Russian name, and one of them with the name field completely missing. So that means that person doesn't have a Korean nor Russian name. However, if you would like to retrieve that name anyway, you can use the dot name and language name instead. What the dot represents is to retrieve the first available language or the field with no language specified at all. So now if we add the dot at the end of the list, 
Nokia, I run the query. We can see that we can now see the person who's missing, who is Michael. Just like in GraphQL, the query itself describes the graph structure that you would like to return in the response of the query, as you as a client get to decide what fields and edges are returned. dgraph will populate all the edges and fields recursively. Note that edges, which can potentially have multiple values associated to them, usually result in an array of objects. We can see that us as a client get to control what edges are returned, but we can remove like the name edge, for example. If we run the query now, we can see that the age edge has been removed. We can also go deeper in our queries. For example, let's find out what are Michael's friend's friends. We can do this by adding friend and then requesting the name again. You can see that these are now nested here. For example, one of Michael's friends, Sehyun, also has the friends Amit, Catalina, and Hyangsin. You can see that this has been recursively populated in the result of the query. So far, we have only seen filters being applied to the top level node. They, however, can be applied to any level node as well in queries as shown here with this at filter syntax. So for this query, all the nodes of a friend will be filtered such that only the nodes whose age edge is greater than or equal to 27 will be returned. So if we run this query, we can see that is what happens. None of the friends here have an age below 27. dgraph also has a whole load of different functions you can use in your filters and queries. For example, here we have all of the terms which will match that the second argument terms separated by spaces are all present in the first argument separated by spaces. For example, if our first argument was star wars, uh, star of wars, and our second argument was star wars, then that will return true. Similarly, if our second argument was was star, that would also be true. Something like Star Trek would not be true. However, with the any of terms function, it can be true. So if you use any of terms and your first argument was star of was and your second argument was star trek, it would be true because one of the terms in the second argument, star, is present in the first one. So there are a bunch of other functions that you can find in the documentation. You got all your equality functions and comparators. And Regular expressions, full text search, and geo search is also available, but they will have their own sections in the tool. As you are probably already very familiar with, you have your logical operators and, or, and not. For example, this query here, we are checking that the friend and their age edge is greater than or equal to 27 and the age edge is less than or equal to 48. So if we run this query, we can see that. We only get people between 27 and 48. To show that not works as well, we can add a not in case the expression in brackets. Now we can see we get everyone else who is not between 27 and 48. Sorting is also available in the queries. For example, this query here, we are specifying the order in ascending order by the age edge. So now if we exit this query, we can see a list of friends and the ages are sorted in ascending order. Similarly, we can do order desk to get the age in descending order. We can also do these on the root node. For example, let's say you wanted to get everyone. So I would do, let's do a function which will return true for everyone, such as greater than or equal to age of zero. And you can specify an order ascending of age. So now we're gonna get everyone in the database. Let's make the name language. All right, so now we can see everyone in the database who have an age and greater than zero, and they're sorted in ascending order. And like before, this is do by descending. dgraph also supports pagination, using the first, offset, and after parameters. The first specifies the number of results to return, offset specifies the number of results to skip, and after specifies the UID in which to only return results after such the UID. So for example, in this query here, we are retrieving Michael's friends. 
uh, where we have specified we'd like to order the names of the friends in ascending order. We'd like to just have an offset of one to skip the first result and return the first two results after skipping the first. So with this query, we can see that is what we get. We get the two results here, Artyom and Catalina. And uh, we can see that this is pagination working because we can see the offset to zero. If we can see emit and Artyom. If we increase the number of results, we see emit, Artyom and Catalina as we would expect. And we can do also a bunch of other things like offset by one and then get the first four. So now we see Artyom, Catalina, Sihan and Sarah. So this is great for limiting large results, getting the top number of answers, or paginating results for display. dgraph also has a count function, which as you'd expect, returns the number of edges given the edge name. So in this query here, we do a count on friend, which will return num the number of friends that Michael will have. So for this query, you can see that it works as expected. We get count friend, which is five. You can also use count in filters and queries, and we'll see that very shortly. So you probably already know most of this based on what you've seen, but I'll go over again in more depth on how dgraph queries work. So first you have the root object. This can actually have multiple things in it. So we aren't just limited to just doing one search query at a time. We can add another query here like Michael, where we will get Michael by equating the name, then getting the name, age, for example. And we run this query, we can see we get Michael at the end. As mentioned before, this field, lots of friends and Michael, are purely for the response. They don't actually have an impact on the query itself. Some things to note are that the main query here in the function must be an index query and can only have one function in it. So in this case, we're doing a greater than equal to count on friend. So if we look at the schema, would we actually find out that friend has been indexed on the count? So if I, I can show you that right now, schema correct. friend type count index. And we can see that it is has a count of true. So it's been indexed by count. Back to this query, after that you specified the main function that dgraph will use, that must be indexed such th so then the query will be fast, otherwise dgraph will need to scan through the entire database to find what you're requesting for. We can use filters after this first stage. For example, let's limit the people return such that the ages are only between 20 and 30. Do that with at filter, be equal to age 20 and less than or equal to age 30. Now run this query, we can see that we only get people back who are between 20 and 30, which happens to only be one person, say young, who also has a friend count greater than two. So ideally, your main function here, the index one, will reduce the search space as much as possible. So then the filters, which are performed in memory, deal with less data, making your queries faster. That sums up this section. So there's also a has function, which will only return nodes that have the outgoing edge. For example, here, we have our main query here says has friend. So this will only return results which have a friend edge. So if we run this, we see that, well, yep, yeah, we get all the people, none of the animals. This is also an alias, which I believe is coming right up. Here we go, so aliases, are used to basically remap or rename the results of an edge in the response of the graph. For example here, we are renaming name to person's name and count friend to number of friends, which we can see when you execute this query that they've been remapped in the JSON response. So this is useful for cleaning up your responses and to perhaps let the database do a bit of the work if you're exposing this as an API for your service. So the cascade directive, remove any nodes that don't have all of the matching edges in the query. For example, in this query here, only the results which have all of name, age, friend, and then all the friends which have name and owns pet will be returned. So let's remove cascade first. 
and let's actually resolve Evan's pet. So now you can see here we have a number of people here, and some of them don't own any pets. For example, Atiom, Amit don't own pets, nor does Sarah. Only Seihyung and Kalina do. So now, if we return this creator back to what it was and add Cascade, we can see that we only have Seihyung and Catalina yet left, the two people who had a pet. Everyone else who did not have a pet was removed. So this is quite similar in this specific example to doing something like friend filter not has owns pet. Oh, sorry, has owns pet. And yep, yeah, that'll get us basically the same result. But Cascade is super handy because you don't have to list out all of the parameters you need in a filter. It's much cleaner to just be able to type out all of the edges that you want and then to tell the database to remove all of the results which don't have all of the edges you want. We can also try this little query here that they recommend us to try. So without Cascade, we see the results. We get Michael's friend, Sarah, and every and her friends, which are greater than 27. Now, if we add Cascade, oh, well, note that some people don't have any friends who are greater than 27. For example, Sarah doesn't, Artyom doesn't, and Catalina doesn't. So now if we run the query, we find that Sarah, Catalina, and Artyom are gone. So only the people who do have friends whose age are greater than 27 will be left over. So the normalized directive returns only edges listed with an alias, and this will flatten the result to remove nesting. So for example, in this query here, we have two edges which have an alias on them, name and count friend. Do note that you can alias an edge to be the same name as the original edge, like done right here. So from this query, we'll see that we only get name and number of friends left. So to showing the flattened result, we can do owns pet, and then we give that a name. Let's do pet name. And we can see that the owns pet has been flattened. It does not exist anymore, and instead all we get is pet name. So that's how normalize works. So queries can contain comments. The syntax for comments is just a simple hash, and then the text to the right of it will all be commented out. This can be useful for documentation in your program, just like how you should be commenting your own code anyway. All right, so that concludes the end of this tour. I hope you found this tour useful, and if you'd like to find more tours, simply head to tour.dgraph.io. Thanks for watching.